Hi guys, oh, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are looking at a brand new mod. Alexander Total Overhaul version 2 for Rome Total War. Alexander, does this mod save Rome Total War Alexander base game? And I mean that in the most respectful way possible to the base game. But for me, someone who's got probably over 2,000 hours in this game, I genuinely can't remember the last time I played an Alexander campaign. Now, this mod could change all that though, because it looks amazing, it looks really good, and we're going to be going over some of its features today. And this mod is predominantly a map mod with a lot of overhaul elements um, put on top of it. Now, this isn't just one map mod though. This isn't just one map mod. You don't get one map, you don't get two maps, you get three whole maps with this mod, guys. Three whole maps. Um, one of them is the standard Alexander map with a few tweaks. One of them is Alexander Hellenic Universalis, as you can see here. It's basically a giant Alexander map. Uh, pretty much the same map of settlements, but it's just a giant map. And then we have another giant map, which is Wars of Philip II. 356 BC, so a bit of a prequel to the Alexander game, which is an awesome addition, and I think that, for me, is the most interesting part of this whole mod. But, first things first, let's get into the Alexander map, and let's talk about some of the tweaks and changes. Now, first things that you can see is that there are a few more factions. You can also play all of the factions. Um... There are some emergent factions in here, like the Ptolemaic Egyptians, uh, the Greeks, the Phrygians, ah, the Seleucids, of course, as well. Yeah, I thought there was four, um, but these are the emergent factions, of course, uh, but they will simulate what's happened in the game first, so you can go and join those, and it basically starts after Alexander's death in the game. And, of course, up here, you can play the Indians, which is excellent. An excellent addition to the game. So we're going to jump in as the Indians. And I'm just going to show you what's been going on with this mod. So here we are on the main campaign map, guys. And first of all, we're going to look at the campaign map tweaks on this map. And then we're going to go on to the custom battle to look at some of the unit roster changes. And then we'll have a quick look at the other two maps, focusing on the prequel map, of course. So, of course, you have India over here with three settlements, which is fantastic. Added to them, they get the Indian mercenaries, which adds another infantry melee unit to the Indians because they are very, very archer heavy. Um, and, of course, they're playable now, which is fantastic. On top of this, the Nabatai are now playable in Arabia as an Arabian Egyptian nation. The starting armies of the Dahai um, Thrace, Illyria and Scythia have been changed to fit the new unit roster, which we will look at in turn. And of course there has been some nerfing done. So Thrace has been nerfed significantly, as you can see. They pretty much only have a half stack to start with now. And Illyria has pretty much four units, unless they have anything starting in the trees over there. Which we should be able to see with Fog, Fog of War toggled off, right? Um, and on top of that, Macedon has been buffed significantly. Basically, this is just to stop Thrace and Illyria destroying Macedon before they've even got going. Um, and there is a land bridge over here, as you can see. So a land bridge between Europe and Asia. So that these guys can walk across without having to get onto boats. Which is a fantastic addition. It also means Persia can get across as well. So that is the other side of the coin. In terms of alliances and all that sort of thing, India actually start at war with Persia, even though they've got an absolutely monstrous amount of troops over here. Um, basically just to stop the Persians and Indians from just developing a stalemate where they do nothing and Persia only focuses on Macedon. And on top of that, Macedon starts allied with Thrace, Illyria, Scythia and Darhai, so they basically only option for them is to attack Persia. I mean, yeah, they could probably attack Dacia, 
But apart from that, you know, that's the only option for them is to go this way. There's also Scythia up here that basically has the base game roster now. So they can swoop in with their horse archers and do some real damage as well. The Dahai up here have a pretty much fully changed roster. So we are going to take a look at them in the custom battlefield as soon as we can. So we're here at the custom battle guys. And we're just going to show you some of the new units real quick. And of course the Macedonians stay pretty much the same. But the Indians do have a new unit in the Nubian Spearmen and the Indian Mercenaries. The Nubian Spearmen have been changed so that they have become an Indian unit. I don't know why they're called Nubian anymore, but they are still called Nubian Spearmen. Uh, and they're basically a slightly better version of the Indian Spearmen, as you can see. They just have better defense and an alt attack as well of two. I'm not surprised what that alt attack is. That's probably if they don't, they aren't in Phalanx. Also, you get the Indian Mercenaries, which gives them another melee option so if we look at thrace guys thrace have been given some of the dacian units in the base game like the falksman the bastani and that's pretty much it um, apart from that they stay pretty much similar so dacia as well gets some germanic units such as the barbarian noble cavalry i believe they had that before though barbarian cavalry um, warband i don't think they had warband before so they get a few extra units as well there are a lot of unit tweaks uh, including some of the generic barbarian units being removed for say dacia so some of these more generic units have been removed but the real big change comes with the dahai which has a new mix of barbarian step and eastern units as well as being sort of an arabian faction now so they have arabian um ethnicity so that basically means that they are now an eastern faction but of course as you can see things that have been added are the elephants the cataphracts although the cataphracts um, have been nerfed somewhat with only 12 armor now they have the hillmen they have the standard swordsmen as well as the chosen swordsmen so they have the archers as well the barbarian archers and the tribal slingers so there is a massive mix in the Dahai now. You can see Barbarian Caravoy and Barbarian Horse Archers. Um, as well as, you know, some of these Eastern units like the Cataphracts and the Elephants and Hillmen. So they have a very, very good mix now of troops. Quite interesting. One of the most interesting factions there are now. So let's take a look at some of the other maps. And we'll talk about some of the changes that have been put into these maps and then we can look at the walls of the philip as well which is fantastic so let's get onto the hellenic universalis map and let's stick into there so as you can see guys there's been these added extra bits alexander invades persia so basically it's a little bit of backstory as to where we are and what's happening in the world currently which is absolutely fantastic gives you a little bit of an idea of what you're doing so if we toggle the fog of war as you can see guys this map is ginormous absolutely ginormous look how long it takes to reach anywhere so this is more of a sort of tactical slower sort of gameplay if you are looking at this map as you can see look it's going to take me well we're not allied let's say we attack them oh we're allied with the dacians as well um these guys it's going to take a long time to get there, as you can see. Um, so this map is just absolutely ginormous, guys. Look at the space out here. It's crazy. Terra Incognita. <laughs> That's a reference from Europa Universalis. And of course, the Hellenic Universalis is a reference to that, to Europa Universalis as well. As well as... Um, they said they based the map on Imperator Rome, so that's pretty interesting. A good Paradox and Total War mix. But over here, look at this. Look how long it's going to take that unit to get across to Patala. It's going to take about five turns or so. So this is definitely a much slower sort of gameplay map. Uh, but the thing with that is you do need to be more tactical um, with your troops. More tactical with your troops. More, you know... 
um, thinking ahead. Because if you send your troops off one way and you get attacked the other way, you are screwed. So you really do need to think about what you're doing a lot in this map. Uh, and of course, it's 49 settlements, so it's very similar to the normal map, but three regions in India. Um, and you do have that passable straight across. Um, where is it? Yeah, it's across there. So you've got the passable straight across there. So you can move between um, your holdings in Asia and your holdings in Greece. So look at this, though. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's a beautiful map. A lot of farmland out here. <laughs> But I guess it is the Fertile Crescent. Um, but yeah, it is absolutely stunning. It's massive. For me personally, this is just my personal opinion. I would probably play the normal size map. Just because for me, it takes a little bit too long to get between settlements. I prefer that faster sort of gameplay. But there are some people who prefer the slower grind of something like this or Europa Barbarorum. And of course... That is just down to personal opinion, guys. That is not um, that is not a problem either way. So, yeah. But it is amazing. <laughs> it is really good. And it looks absolutely stunning. I'm just wondering, like, what's the path through there? You go across the mountains. So, how do you get here? Okay, around that way through the mountains. There's not really obvious paths through the mountains over here, but... Yes, it is a stunning map. And of course, all those changes we talked about in the last bit, the custom um, changes to the um, unit rosters and the changes to the map are all applicable to this map as well. But now let's get into the meat and potatoes, the map we've all been waiting for, the um, Philip II map. So My here favorite. we are on the Philip II map. And it is an absolute stunner, guys. I'm going to toggle Fog of War once again so you can see this beautiful map that has been absolutely brilliantly crafted. And we are, of course, the Peloponnesian League currently. Um, the Peloponnesian League. Um, capital city, Sparta. So it's basically Sparta. Uh, but there are a few extra factions on here other than just Macedon. And once again, you can see... That it is massive. Look at the bottom of Italy. It's huge. Sicily is huge as well. It even includes Carthage over here, which is fantastic. You've got Persia over in the um, east. Um, and you've got the Boeotian League. You have the Delian League. You have us, which is the Peloponnesian League. You've got Macedon. You've got Thrace. You've got Dacia. And you have Illyria once again. And on top of that, you have the Romans, of course. So the Romans across here, you have the Brutii, which have been renamed the Samnite Confederation. You have the Scipii, which have been renamed the Italian League. Um, interesting to note that uh, Neopolis or, um, is right next to them with the Delian League. Which is very historically accurate to the time. And the Julii, which have the Roman Republic. So the Julii are basically the Rome, Romans right now. Um, but of course, you can see, if you start as a Greek League player, you have all your colonies spread out everywhere. I mean, we have an army down in Syracuse, as you can see. Um, but it is amazing. Look at this, guys. So the Julii, Brutii, and Scipii basically have the same unit rosters. Um, to the base game. Um, the same with Carthage. Very similar unit roster from the base game as well. But the Peloponnesian League basically have the Greek cities roster. Look, you can see militia hoplites. But with the option of recruiting Spartan hoplites in Sparta and Thebes, um, which is over here. So you have that option of recruiting Spartan hoplites here and Thebes, which is fantastic. Um, the Boeotian League has basically the same as the Greek city-states, but with sacred band units added in that they can recruit in Sparta and Thebes as well. And the Delian League, which is basically Athens, um, has a Greek city-states um, from the base game unit roster, but without the ability to recruit Spartans or sacred bands. So slightly weaker, I would say, for those boys. Uh, but look at this. This is a fantastic map. Once again, it is massive. So me personally, I, I would love if they would build a 
version of this map that is pretty much base game size in terms of movement of troops around and I would definitely definitely play it if that was the case because um, it looks amazing but seeing as we are here guys why don't we get a battle going just to finish this uh, just to finish this off and show you what this mod is capable of so as you can see guys we've loaded back in as Macedon just because they're slightly closer to take some settlements um, and do some battles so I didn't have to do a few turns did a couple of turns um, but now we are ready to go and fight for Stratos let's go look at this army though Phalanges, Hoplites a Gryanian javelin men and some allied cavalry as well as Parmenion. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention though guys was that the uh, family trees have all been altered. Well, not all of them, but a lot of the family trees have been altered to be more historically accurate, especially on this. And there is a zero year old Alexander in this, <laughs> in this family tree currently, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you want to... Send Alexander on to glory against the Persians. You can do. You can do. You've just got to wait until they come of age, of course, guys. Just until they come of age. Um, Today is a green day. Well, we'll not listen to that. A couple of things to note, though, guys, with the mod at the minute. Currently, the Persians have don't have the best of... Um, now let's get the phalangists. Well, we just use the phalangists because they are going to be good enough to deal with everything that's in there. General and Cav, we can get you boys over here. You are ready to go, aren't you? Um, one thing to note. Ah, we, we uh, dropped that ram. What imbeciles? What imbeciles already? Uh, but yeah, one thing to note though, guys, with the, uh, with the mod is that Persia apparently is... Not brilliant at the start of the game in terms of its economy's weak and all that sort of thing. So that is one thing to note. So maybe don't play economy uh, Persia until they've sorted that. That would probably be the best option. Oh, look at these guys getting shredded. Skirmishers. Show no mercy, boys. Here they come. You guys get in. I want you guys to just go and probably just get into them. I don't I don't care if you run away. Um, you boys, let's get you behind as well. Or at least here. I'm ready to go. I hate the fact that Phalanx just takes so long. What's this? Yeah, guard mode. Cool. Let's get running, boys. Get there. Our soldiers have done well this day. The walls are taken! Yeah, of course they're running. Move, move. Fools! Get okay, you three. Oh, you're running, aren't you? Get in there! Get in there! Let's go, boys! Time for Phalanx! <laughs> Phalanx, just my boys! Let's get in! Let's go! Oh my god! These poor hoplites! <laughs> Oh, I'm just a strong bro. Very strong. Well, just let's go. Speed it up. You guys get here. Um. Oh, we all have to go through that way anyway. So it is Pokey Spear versus Pokey Spear. Good luck against this Pokey Spear though. This is the best Pokey Spear. Are you ever going to come against my friends? Oh my god, they got straight in. They got right in the middle of the midst of us. Let's go. Get forward, Phalanges. You boys up. Get those spears in. You should still be doing good damage. Come on, boys. Get in there. It is nice to see these units, honestly, from playing base game. Oh, look at them. They are beautiful. Oh, he's dead. Nice one. It is time to press the attack. How is he not broken yet, though? That's the thing I want to know. Get your spears down, boys. That should help quite a bit. Let's get into those hoplites. Or just walk through, actually, would be a good idea. And then halt. Get those spears down, boys! 
Oh my god, why do you always do such stupid things? Facing the wrong way, boys. You are facing the wrong way, boys! Very much the wrong way. Yeah, get your spears down, that's better. Good lord. That far just taking some losses. Gotta do this, because otherwise they do stupid things like they were before, like this. He's facing the wrong way, boys, again. There we are, that's better. Phalanxes are just, their scripting, their pathing is just so bad. That's the one thing about Rome. They, they, they claim to have fixed it, but... Mm, did they fix it? <laughs> that's the thing. Let's go, get through him. That was easy. Come on, boys. Let's go. They're all buzzing now. Let's go. Speed it up. Cool. Let's get into these boys. Oh, they're just routing anyway. Ah, oh, stop. They turned the wrong, complete wrong way. It's like you almost have to wait somewhere first before they'll come and attack you. Like, ah. Oh. Well, we won anyway. Well then, guys, that is the Alexander Total Overhaul mod version 2. And it looks fantastic, doesn't it? Those two extra maps are fantastic. I like the changes they've made to the base game, including changing the Dahai quite significantly, adding in some extra factions. And of course, my favorite, my cherry on top, is the Philip, uh, the second map, which looks fantastic. It'd be amazing if they could do a smaller version of that map because that for me I would play the hell out of just because it's easier and quicker gameplay for me personally. But yes, I do think this mod is very good and for me it saves Rome Total War Alexander and actually makes me want to play Alexander again because I haven't played it for a long time. So I might do that if this video gets enough views and likes guys, we'll see. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do like, please do subscribe, all that good stuff. It helps the channel out immensely, and I'll see you all again on the next video.